Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network, and welcome to a mail call. Not on Monday, sadly. Yes, I've had one of those weeks. Uh, I had to get a new phone because my old Apple iPhone, with its 64 gigabytes of memory, decided to just stop working, yes, and uh, brought it to my Verizon place, and they said, oh yeah, we can't fix this, you need to take it to the Apple Store. They may, they may be able to fix it. Apple Store looks at it, oh, we'll try to do a restore. That didn't work. So restore doesn't work. So then they have to uh, basically tell you, oh yeah, you need to replace the phone. Sorry. So two years, slightly over two years, I had that phone and never, you know, occasionally dropped it or whatever, but it was in an otter box. It was well protected. So that, because I use my phone to record, here's my new phone, um, which is just a Android-y kind of cheapy thing which I'm hoping is going to work because I do record audio while I'm recording the, the camera is recording the video portion, so that should be fine, but the, the audio is recorded through the phone, so hopefully the phone is going to be able to keep up. Although, I think most of these Samsung phones have slightly faster processors than iPhone, so hopefully I'll be all right. Well, you guys did not tune in to hear about all my problems, so we will commence with the unboxing because you can see there is some stuff and some decent stuff too, so we will... Uh, we will be we will be unboxing a lot of these samples. Um, if you're not familiar with how these videos work, I'm showing you what's come in, what's new. These are all new kits, new book, new books, new magazines, and so forth that are just getting to me in the last week or so. And uh, these kits are going to be available for review and uh, feature write-ups and and uh, blogs and other things on our website. If you're somebody who's interested in doing online content. You can get with me or one of the other editors on the site, one of the managing editors especially, and uh, talk with them about what's available sample-wise. Samples are available on the home pages. There's a link basically saying, you know, check available samples. It's in the kind of in the reviews block section. I'll put a graphic up here to show you where that is. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look. We've got two boxes that have come in from Tamiya. So we'll see what they have brought us or sent us. They didn't actually bring it. Uh, I know they have several uh, large box kits coming out, but um, they don't, uh, I don't think they've sent us either of those because, uh, okay, so right up, but these are items that I think they just recently announced or uh, brought out at the Shizuki uh, Hobby Show. So this is the 1700 Shimakaze. Now, uh, which is interesting about this ship is I recently got this ship in World of Warships. So this is a ship I'm kind of quasi-familiar with, at least, in terms of gameplay. But this is the one uh, 700 scale version of the Shimakaze water, Waterline series, so Waterline meaning not the whole hull is present. Um, but uh, for people who build this series, I'm sure, uh, if this is a new tool especially, I'm sure it's going to be well received. All right, what else did we get in this box? We got in a new figure set. This is the uh, Wehrmacht, uh, Wehrmacht, Wehrmacht, I don't say that a lot, Where? But I, I know it's that's basically Wehrmark, sorry, Wehrmark, Wehrmark. Boy, I'm going to get in real trouble with pronouncing the, my W's wrong in German. Um, the Wehrmark uh, uh, tank crew set. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the regular tank crew. Some people confuse this with an SS uniform or whatever, but this is the normal German black tank crew set. But they look, they look very spiffy. And again, I'm not sure if this is a new, uh, a new tool or not. I'll look real quick, you know, because I'm like that sometimes. I'm really curious. Uh, I can find it on here real yeah, fast. I'm hiding the dates on me. Oh, here we go. Right here behind the main, the main bit. 2017. All right. So brand new tool figure set. Um, we also got in a oh for the broom bar. This is the 135th scale broom bar, uh, which I believe may be in here in a white box hidden away. Um, this is the Zimmerick coating sheet for that uh, kit that has not yet been released, but it will be released soon. So they do have this out at least though in full. Uh, full uh, released format, in other words, like uh, store format. This is basically the very, very scale accurate kind of Zimmeret, which uh, to me has been doing. And uh, that leaves a box way down here in all this, all this popcorn, which is this box right here. And this is the, the white box broom bar kit, which uh, is, yeah, just it's going to be out in about probably a month to two months, so we just haven't gotten the, the, the final uh, version for this. Uh, for you YouTube guys, yeah, I know. Andy's already done it, and he's already painted it, and he's already built it. 
Um, but yeah, we, we just got it. So literally, I just got it today. Picked it up from my mailbox today. There was there must have been a delay, um, either shipping wise or the box got held up somewhere. Uh, didn't get held up in customs, but it got held up somewhere. All right. So to be fair to Tamiya, we will do their other Tamiya box and stay with the Tamiya theme before we get on with some of these other guys here. Uh, so this is the other box we got in from them. Now this came in a little earlier last week, but they do have two, uh, apparently two um, 16th scale uh, armor kits coming out. Um, so those should be arriving soon from what I, from what I gather from what my contact said. All right, so we've got the new um, Vought 4 F, F4U1D, Corsair. This is the D model. So it's the, I guess, more land-based, if I'm correct in saying that. Uh, uh, I don't know if this is the, like, would be the Pappy Bowington, or he, did, he flow, did he fly a D? I'm, I'm not sure on that. But uh, So anyway, still the, the, the bubble cockpit, but, um, you know, you got your, you aircraft guys know what changes they made to this, but they did make some changes. This, the plane went from being originally kind of more of a carrier design deployment to, to being more land-based. Uh, and then we also got the Itilary, um ICM. Actually, I, see, I keep saying Itilary, but ICM, the ICM uh, German uh, 3.5 truck, uh, ton truck, uh, AHN with 37 centimeter flak, 37A gun. Now this kit um, is, you know, quite an interesting looking cargo vehicle. I'm not sure what, uh, I'm guessing... I'm kind of wondering whether where the, the origins are outside Germany for this for this truck, like basically like one of the countries they took over made this truck. But you guys would know. Um, some interesting interesting new kits coming out. Now, as far as I know, this is also a new tool, um, and I'm not aware of it being released in the past. So, but it could be a scenario where they've just they've probably mixed in some looks like some Tamiya um, oil drum barrels and gas cans with some Tamiya figures. And then, of course, the ICM main plastic kit. And then the gun is a Tamiya 33.7 um, uh, centimeter flat gun. So basically, it's kind of a, mer a merger kit, you know, the, the truck with the, the other parts. And we'll, do, we'll definitely have an unboxing of this one, uh, as well as um, probably the Corsair. Um, these are just beautiful kits. I don't know if, if you haven't done these before, the... the the, the newer um, Corsairs, they're, they're just, you know, they're up here in terms of, uh, or up here in terms of uh, plastic production quality and, and what you get in this kit and so forth. They're not, they're not inexpensive, obviously, but they definitely, um, I mean, even the way they, they, the way they package them, you know, with the little thing here, there's obviously some photo etch. So again, if you spend enough money, you get photo etch from Mia. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of these kits don't have photo etch in them because they, they're trying to keep a certain price point. Which people in modeling don't understand marketing. I get it. You guys don't work in marketing. You work in other <laughs> fields. But that's kind of the way marketing works. Uh, they're not going to put stuff in a box if they think, oh, well, that's going to push the price point to X. This is, why they're, this is why aftermarket companies even popped up because... They saw an opening to make things that, you know, the kit manufacturers didn't want to put in the kits, but they could have easily made, obviously. All right, so new stuff from Plus Model. We've got a Jetty uh, in 135th scale. So another wood laser carved uh, wooden part set with a uh, little life rafty thing sitting on the end of the dock there. Uh, we've got from Aeroline a pilot for a P-51 standing. Uh, this is 148th scale. And uh, he's got his uh, emergency chute attached there and, and whatever it looks like. Maybe the, I guess that was the, what are the, what are the things? Is this for his other chute? Maybe he has another chute on the back, but he has some kind of strappy things over his shoulders. Um, we've got from Aeroline the uh, wheels for a P2V, V, P2V, that dude, sorry, um, in 172nd scale. Well, those are some big wheels for 172nd scale. Um... And then we've got uh, 135th scale, Berry. I think that's supposed to say Berry, but it says Beery and Lemonade Crates. Maybe Beery is a brand, but yeah, it says Beery instead of something maybe. Um, and that's in, uh, again, I said 135th scale, right? And then also 135th scale from their Easy Line series, we've got these <laughs> suitcases uh, in 135th scale, and they, they have some little... Uh, decals and such for branding, I think, on them, or maybe like a travel, travel stickers and stuff that used to go on those old crates. 
old suitcase crates. And then we have a big one from, from a Plus model, a 135th scale US road roller. Uh, this is probably used for like making air, uh, for making airfields and things like that. So if you're uh, thinking about doing an airfield diorama, this looks like it's probably more modern, judging by the seats anyways. Uh, so I'm not sure, maybe this is used in Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, but yeah, that's general. I'm more that, I mean, I could have used it for road construction, I guess, but it's probably more likely used for, for creating, uh, uh bases and, and, uh, roads and, and, uh, airfields and stuff around our bases over there. At least, yeah, U.S. road roller. I was right, and right, and thinking it was U.S. because it says U.S. Um, from, uh, Casemate? From Osprey, sorry. From Osprey. We have gotten in um, another uh, David Fletcher book, the uh, British Tanks, vol uh, is this volume two? No, just British Tanks. Okay, so he's, yeah, he put out a couple other books before this that were uh, German, right? They were German vehicles? Anyways, just try <laughs> trying to remember things off the top of my head. Not a good idea. Uh, British battle tanks, British made tanks of World War II. So probably if I look in here, maybe, no, look back here. Ah, yes, it was the battle tank. It was British, right? Yeah, British battle tanks. Um, then he put out the the, the Panzer, history of the Panzerwaffe. Yeah, Panzerwaffe. Panzerwaffe. Sorry, I'm doing it again. Uh, Texas A&M catalog. Don't you see that? Uh, this is an unfortunate tale of 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 water. So this 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 package got ripped. And uh, remember how I was saying how things are packaged to keep out water. Yes, well, this did not keep out the water, unfortunately. I don't know where it, I don't, it got destroyed, but uh, this is the first of these uh, History and Collections uh, Steel Masters magazines to, for this to happen to, so sorry, guys, uh, in France, but uh, this one, number 148, did not make it to me in a condition where I, I tried to dry it out and get it in some sun, but yeah, it's just, the pages are melded together, so that one's going in the, uh, the circular file. All right, um... We did get, uh, looks like some, looks like uh, Scale uh, Sam is sending us magazines for first time ever. Cool, I won't have to occasionally buy them like I do sometimes just to check advertisers and stuff. They have sent us MMI, all right, Scale, scale Modelcraft, in, Military Modelcraft International. I was thinking of S, the other one. Uh, so this was, this magazine's been around for forever by Guideline Publications, obviously. And uh, you guys, you know, for armor guys, they are well familiar with this magazine. But we will do a turning the page on it, just like we do with all our other uh, publications. And thanks to them for starting to send us stuff. And then from uh, Kamad Publishing. I can get it out of here. They've sent us the Panzer Aces. So this is actually, um, that's the press, or this is... Trying to remember, they always get, yeah, this is Asian, yeah, right. So Asian Press, um, this is uh, Panzer Aces uh, arm, Armor Modeling, I think it's Armor Modeling Magazine, but they've got it covered up there. Uh, and this is a modern AFV uh, theme, I think, at least what they have here. Obviously, they don't always do modern, and so it varies, but I think this this one's theme more towards modern. So again, we'll cover that in a turning the page. All right, so that leaves these two boxes, and one of them is from IBG. We'll open that one first. Um, some news on the sample front too, uh, just so you guys know, kind of, they're coming. Uh, I did hear from somebody at Squadron. We used to get kits direct, sent, sent direct uh, from TACOM, from China, uh, from Hong Kong more accurately. Um, and um, they stopped doing that. Cost, I'm sure, was the main thing. But they also picked up U.S. distributors that probably were like, hey, we should do that for you because that's part of our distributor stuff, <laughs> uh, which is I've run into, run into in the past, um, the distributors get kind of... A possessive about some of these things, uh, which I don't blame them. I'm just saying it's, that's just the way they, the kind of the way the system works. Anyway, so I heard from Squadron, which Squadron, uh, we've had a on again, off again relationship over the last 15, almost now, yeah, 15 plus years. So, um, but they are, they're, they, they were asked by TACOM to send us some samples. So we are getting a whole big box of samples apparently from, from, uh, Squadron, uh, for TACOM. So 
look for that soon. I'm sure it's probably kind of on its way at this point. Um, but yes, more more samples. Uh, I'm gonna have to try to kick it into overgear. Uh, somebody made a comment on the. Ch mm, I think it was on. A, I'm sure it was on one of these mail calls or something about. You need more help. Yes, I do need help. So help, <laughs> help, help. <laughs> um, anyways, um, I think he's expecting me to like hire people and bring them in here. Sorry, this. I, I actually went to, at one point I thought about bringing in an intern to do some of the kind of you know prep work and maybe taking photos and stuff like that, and then I would teach them about the internet, and so it'd be kind of a this intern, you know, like an unpaid intern kind of scenario. I don't know if any of you are in, are self employed, but the mere idea that a, a company that doesn't employ any employees, I have zero employees, everybody on, on the website's all basically, you know, they're doing it for the love of the hobby and the, like, they get free samples and, you know, whatever their reasoning is, it's a, they're unpaid volunteers. But um, the, the mere suggestion or idea that, that when I hire somebody, you don't understand the bureaucratic red tape of just hiring one employee, how much you know, I would have to do to like bring on payroll things and, and tax liabilities and oh, it's just, it's just, it's not worth it. So unfortunately, uh, that's one of the, um, well, I don't know if this is true as much overseas. I think it probably is in Europe, but, but in places like Hong Kong, it probably isn't true. Oh yeah, we hire employees easily. It was just, you know, da, 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 fill out some paperwork and we're gone. We're on the way. That's the way it used to be here. It used to be that way in the United States. Sure. You know, you have under X amount of employees here. Just, there you go. No, 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 no. Not in the United States. No, no. Our federal government has 70,000 pages of bureaucratic regulations that we're all supposed to read, apparently, if you're in business. Yeah. Or even individuals sometimes are violating those regulations. Okay. Step down off the soapbox. All right. So, IBG. Sorry. We've got the uh, 172nd scale um, Zrini. I'm not sure. Zrini 2 Hungarian 105 millimeter assault gun. A couple of 35th scale kits, I believe, of this were put out. Uh, by Bronco, I want to say, uh, a couple of years ago, but this is the first 172nd scale kit I've seen of it. Um, and decal, stay in there, please. So yeah, we're we'll definitely be looking for somebody for those. And also on the 172nd scale front, we have the uh, 40M Turon 1, the Hungarian medium tank. Uh, so that is another 72nd scale offering. And then we have uh, a 172nd scale Type 94 Japanese tank kit with trailers. That's kind of cool. I assume it's not, it's obviously not motor driven, but it's kind of nice. They built a trailer with, with, with a tank track type scenarios. Um, maybe it is, no, they'd have to, yeah, I don't think it's, it's not powered, right? Because you'd have to have like a drive shaft coming off the tank or something to even try to power that. So it would need to be powered. Such a silly concept. Um, 172nd scale PZL-23A Karas, Polish light bomber. So that's an interesting aircraft. Never seen one of those before, and I'm not sure there's a lot available on that one other than maybe some resin kits. Uh, 172nd scale PZL-42 Polish light bomber. So uh, this one is kind of similar. Well, no, it's similar. The tail is completely different. Um, but the um, wing configuration, the landing gear is fixed on this, this one. This is more of a heavy bomber, I think. But uh, yeah, interesting, more of a, what do you call it, like a, the, the rear tail when you spread it out like that? Is it like a, a T-wing or a T-tail or? What is that? Put that in the comment section. I am curious what type of tail that is. And lastly, from Stevens, what do we have? More braille scale, looks like. Um, this is from Plastic Soldier. Uh, I believe this is, this is definitely a new company. This is, um, this is a, doesn't say scale on here anywhere. We're gonna open it and see. <laughs> uh, well, it's definitely a kit. It's interestingly packed. I mean, that's like, there's like zero space in there other than ver some vertical space. Uh, it looks like new, um, new production, uh, it's the, it's the flat sprues or the flat sprue, uh, pieces. So it's definitely a newer tool, uh, production, but it's, it's a, I want to say it's, that's smaller than 172nd, isn't it? Is that one? It says 15 millimeter miniatures, but they didn't put the actual scale on here. I want, but I want to say that's 187th or, um, smaller than 172nd. Definitely smaller than 172nd, right? Yeah. 
Uh, anyways, they don't say. So put that in the comment section too if you know what 15 centimeter or 15 millimeter, sorry, is referring to as a, as a scale. But that's, um, let me see if the instructions say. Maybe the box people just left it off. Um, they have a couple of different um, versions available for it too, it looks like. Soviet T-55, oh, the different variants. Uh, Polish T-55, Czech, Czech T-55A, Polish, and T-55AM. Yeah, it just says 15 millimeter. Interesting way to do a model and not saying, I mean, clearly, it's not, a, I doubt it's a new scale that doesn't, isn't represented by the current scales that are out there. But, uh, and 15 millimeter would be what, the, the length? I'm not sure what they're, what they're after there. But it does look like it's well made, and actually it's, it is, now that I think about it, it's a bunch of tanks. It's for, it's, okay, so this is, this is for, it says, I should have read the box, hard plastic military figures for the gamer and collector. So this, these are kind of gamer, um, you know, like wargaming uh, sets for people who want to put together a bunch of tanks and, you know, put them on boards and have wargaming battles and stuff. But they're, the detail looks like it's excellent. So I'll do a, I'll do a cracking the box on these just to kind of feature them. But yeah, all the tanks that I was talking about earlier are all here, I think, uh, with potentially different um, decal variant. They look like the same, the same basic tank repeated over and over again, sprue here. But I think you can, you can build all the different variants they were talked about on the, uh, on the, sh the instruction sheet is what I'm guessing. Anyways. All right. Well, that was an interesting little find. Um, So, all right, well, what, what does that leave? All right, so, um, yes, more stuff coming in. This stuff will all go on to our sample spreadsheets. Not today, though. I'm just hoping to get this video up today. It may go out Thursday. This is Wednesday that I'm recording it. But in addition to my, all my phone issues, which was a day and a half, Monday and most of Tuesday, then um, one of our dogs is having uh, some serious problems. We need to take, him in, take her into the vet today. And the, one of the, our other dogs is actually seeming to have this same bowel. Uh, maybe it's a, um, a, um, uh, a bug or something, an infection. Uh, so anyways, yeah. So I'm having to go back home to help the wife bring the dogs into the vet. So, yeah having one of those weeks. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, and again, so, so this stuff may, may or may not be, uh, I'll try, try to say that by the end of day Thursday, all this new stuff will be on the sheets, but there's plenty of older stuff on the sheets, so definitely take a look at those if you're, again, new to our videos or even somebody who's been watching us for a while. We are uh, very interested in, in finding homes for the stuff that we've got in the back, the back section or the, the, the older items. So uh, if it says on there, build review, and we've had it for a long time, you know, you could say, uh, hey, can I do a blog in the forums on that? And, and maybe at this point, we'd be fine with that. So, you know, it's not like we're not open to uh, negotiations on some items, especially as they start to age. Um, or like I said, a lot of times, just because it says that on there doesn't mean that we wouldn't be interested in something else. If, you know, be, beyond, say, a, a simple in, uh, inbox review. As they get older, obviously, inbox reviews kind of matter less because uh, people, there are plenty of inbox reviews out there for them. So, um, I guess that covers everything. So, I'll have my stack of books here that I'm working on. And now I have a few more. Um, but, yeah, I think that covers it for this week. Hopefully, this camera, this recording, and the, my, my whole 16 gigabytes of RAM on here is going to work. Uh, for the audio, anyways, I think 16 gigabytes devices. I think I have like eight left, so we're good. And uh, yeah, it's just a, it's like a Samsung phone. Uh, I'm gonna have to get used to it because I've been using an iPhone for forever. So, uh, but I have to say, it was a lot easier. It's easier already to use the camera. I just go to the camera app, and it I don't have to go in and change my wireless to the other wireless or whatever. It just automatically does it. So, and I have to say, I'm not all that impressed that that Apple product just died at two years because you know you pay more normally. You pay more for the 64 gigabyte version because at the time it was only 16 gigabyte base. Um, luckily, I think I got that camera through like a, a returned Best Buy camera, so they charged less for it or something. I can't remember how much it was. So I think it was like 200 versus 300 or 100 versus 200 or something like that. Anyways, or anyway, anyway, yeah. Uh, <laughs> We will see you next time. Thanks to all our uh, our vendors who sent us these samples. Uh, we will see you next time on mail.